Welcome to the Titus Timeout Podcast. My name is Randy Zimmerman, and today I'll be discussing what are the options when retrofitting older, mechanically regulated terminal units. There are many buildings still in operation today with old, mechanically regulated terminal units. Some of these units are 50 years old. As you can imagine, they probably aren't operating very well, and this means wasted energy and increased operating costs for the building owner. More importantly, this means poor comfort and lower productivity from occupants. Why not just tear the old system out and replace it? Well, sometimes there could be issues with asbestos that people are trying to avoid. Sometimes the solution may need to minimize disruptions for the tenant. So what are the options when total replacement is off the table? Let's take a look. First, a little background. These old mechanically regulated terminal units were originally only available with pneumatic controls. There was typically a wall-mounted thermostat that commanded an actuator to modulate a damper. In single duct units, this damper provided variable air volume to the room. In the case of dual duct heating cooling units, this damper regulated the mixture of hot and cold air supplied to the room. These controls were typically powered by 20 PSI main air pressure supplied by a compressor in the basement. Mechanical regulators would be located downstream from the damper or dampers. These regulator assemblies could take several forms. Sometimes a single regulator could be provided in a variety of sizes and other times banks of smaller regulators were provided in sufficient number to handle the total airflow of the unit. These spring-loaded devices were designed to automatically close down to control a maximum airflow limit to the room. They operated as flow limiters. Units like these were commonly used in the 1960s and 1970s, now making most of these units at least 40 years old. These units were rendered obsolete by the introduction of pressure-independent airflow controls in the late 1970s. As you can imagine, any mechanical device that's been in operation for such an extended period of time with limited access for maintenance is probably no longer doing what it was originally intended to do, and that means wasted energy, and poor occupant comfort. So where do we go from here? Manufacturers like Titus began offering retrofit kits in the early 1980s to allow these old units to be updated to provide pressure independent pneumatic control. This made perfect sense at the time because these units were largely still serviceable and pneumatic controls were in widespread use at that time. Digital controls didn't become available till the late 1980s. These so-called internal retrofit kits came in many sizes and styles. The idea then was to replace the mechanical regulators with modern flow measuring stations and dampers that could be mounted inside these existing units. They always included pneumatic actuators that could be piped to a pneumatic controller mounted on the outside of the unit. This was a solution many years ago, but now even these so-called retrofit kits are largely becoming obsolete. The fact is that these days, it would be rare to find a building owner who would want to spend money upgrading a system and still retain the pneumatic controls. That reality has made the proposition of an internal retrofit much less attractive. So what about digital controls? Ideally, digital controls would be the way to go. Everyone now expects the improved comfort and energy savings that digital controls can provide to the building owner. Unfortunately, there are several reasons why a different approach must be taken when upgrading to digital control. First, the pneumatically actuated damper may be difficult to actuate electrically. Especially in the case of dual duct units, the damper linkages can be quite complicated and were designed to fit only one model of actuator. Therefore, it might be difficult, if not impossible, to source a linear stroking electric actuator as a suitable replacement. In addition, after many decades of use, the damper linkages are usually very worn and sloppy. Also, the seals on the damper blades have likely deteriorated and may be impossible to replace. This could be a major problem, especially on dual duct units where tight damper close off is critically important. Second, when banks of mechanical flow regulators were used to handle higher air capacities, it would require multiple internal kits and multiple electric actuators to retrofit these units. 
the expense of the multiple electric actuators would likely prove to be cost prohibitive. So what's the best approach? One way to avoid the difficulties of an internal digital retrofit is to consider an external retrofit. This involves first removing or disabling the inlet damper arrangement. Then the mechanical regulators must be removed and discarded. The unit has now been gutted and will now merely serve as ductwork. We call this an external retrofit because all the new equipment will be external to the existing unit. This requires the installation of a so-called retrofit unit in each of the primary duct approaches. This retrofit unit can be round or rectangular to match the existing ductwork and provides a flow measuring station, a damper, and can be easily fitted with a digital controller actuator. This has been proven to be the most cost-effective way to upgrade a system originally furnished with mechanically regulated terminal units with the minimal amount of disturbance to the existing ductwork. In summary, any upgrade to improve comfort and reduce energy usage today should include digital controls. To keep material costs under control and minimize field labor, the most economical retrofit approach for most mechanically regulated terminal units is the external retrofit. This approach involves gutting the existing units and installing external retrofit assemblies in each of the primary air duct approaches. Thanks for tuning into our podcast. I hope that this information has been helpful. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, and thanks for taking a time out with us.